What is the simplest circuit you need to make an LED blink? If you set aside passive components like resistors and capacitors, what semiconductors are required? Do you need a single transistor, a pair of transistors? Do you need an integrated circuit like a 555 timer IC? What is the simplest circuit you can build to blink an LED? Growing up playing with electronics, I used to love building the circuits that came with my 130 in 1 electronic project lab. It had a variety of resistors, capacitors, diodes, and even a couple of NPN and PMP transistors. With just a few other components, you could build all kinds of circuits, from fish collars and sirens to AM radio receivers. Being fascinated with light, I was always drawn to the circuits that used the LEDs. I loved watching the LEDs strobe on and off, and I always wanted simpler circuits to make that happen. For the longest time, I thought the A-stable multi-vibrator circuit with two transistors and two LEDs was the simplest I could get if I was using transistors. And if I was using an IC, the 555 timer was always an easy go-to chip to make it happen. But was there an easier way? Fast forward to a week ago, I'm walking through a used bookstore, and on one of the shelves I see an old electronics book that I didn't have as a child. Nostalgia caught me, so I bought it and spent my free time over the next few days flipping through it. In the book, Getting Started in Electronics, Forrest M. Mims III gives a great overview of electronics, starting with electrons, moving through the components, and then giving demonstration circuits. He really makes the subject easy to understand. But I digress. In the semiconductor section, I saw the usual components you would expect. There were diodes, bipolar transistors, and the field effect transistors. But there was also something else, something I hadn't seen as a kid. The symbol looked strikingly familiar to a JFET transistor symbol, but that wasn't what I was looking at. On the page was the symbol and description for a unijunction transistor, and happily, to my surprise, it makes possible the simplest LED blinking circuit I have found to date. Let's talk a little bit about the unijunction transistor. In 1953, the unijunction transistor was both invented and patented. However, unlike other transistors, the unijunction transistor is not an amplifier. It acts more like an on-off switch. In fact, it is sometimes referred to as the double base diode because, like a diode, it only contains a single PN junction. On an N base type unijunction transistor, the N type semiconductor will have two base terminals. When a higher potential exists from base 1 to base 2, a slight current flows from 1 to 2. However, the majority of the current flowing into base 2 does not come from base 1, it comes from the P type emitter junction. This happens when the emitter reaches a high enough potential, the trigger voltage. And as the trigger voltage is reached, current will rapidly flow through the emitter across the PN junction and join the small current flowing from base 1 into base 2. Once the voltage on the emitter drops to a lower level, the current flow across the PN junction stops. Having the current dump through the emitter to base 2 in this way allows the unijunction transistor to act as an oscillator with very few other components. Because of their low cost and simplicity, unijunction transistors were a popular choice in the 1960s and 70s for a variety of electronic applications. They were used as part of timing circuits, free running oscillators, pulse generation circuits, and triggers for other rectifying semiconductors. They definitely had their place in electronics. However, over time, the unijunction transistor was phased out by other components. The 555 timer IC was more convenient and easier to set up. It replaced the unijunction transistor in most circuits. Today, microcontrollers make almost anything possible, pretty much removing the need for unijunction transistors in modern circuits. But the unijunction transistor still has its place in history. Okay, now that we've seen the, how the unijunction transistor works and we've seen what it can be used for, let's actually build a circuit. Um, that'll give us a little bit more experience with it, and it'll, you can actually see it running an LED, blinking it like I've been wanting to do. So to how do we can make this work? Well, we're going to need an LED, a unijunction transistor, uh, and we'll need another resistive element on the emitter. So we're going to use two resistors in series. One of them is a standard resistor. One of them is a variable resistor, or as we like to call them, a potentiometer. And that's kind of the potentiometer is going to connect to the emitter. We're going to set the resistance to 100 ohms for the one going to base one. We're going to set the one going to 
the uh, variable resistor as 1K. Base 2 is going to go to the LED. And now we can hook up our power and our ground. So here's our ground terminal. And we'll get our power terminal. And now if we run this right now, you'll see that current flows down through the, the variable resistor or the potentiometer through the emitter into base two, and it doesn't really do a good job of lighting up the LED. If we, if we drop the, or excuse me, if we increase the value of the potentiometer, current still flowing through, never reaches a low enough level to turn off the unit ejection transistor. So let's add another component here. Let's add the capacitor. And when we do that, we'll, we will add the necessary component to make this work as an oscillator. So we connect this up to the emitter. And now when we turn it on, you'll see that the current flows down into the capacitor, slowly charging it up. And oh, you see that right there? Every once in a while, the capacitor reaches a high enough charge where the voltage oh, right in this area right here reaches the trigger voltage for the uni ejection transistor. When that happens, the uni ejection transistor opens up and it allows current to flow through it, which lights up the LED. Now, if we reduce the value on this potentiometer, it's going to do something interesting. You'll notice it when we get up here a little more. Notice that the resistor stopped blinking, and it's just a dim light now. What's going on is the pot potential right here is high enough so that after the capacitor triggered the uni ejection transistor, the potential never dropped low enough to allow the uni ejection transistor to shut back down. So this is just allowing current to flow through it now into the LED, and it doesn't really do a good job of keeping it lit. If we reduce this again, you'll notice that the charge started flowing into the capacitor again. That means that the uni ejection transistor shut off, and now we're getting it blinking again. All right, there's one more thing we want to do before we finish with the simulation, and that is let's go ahead and put an oscilloscope on this thing and take a look at the voltages on base 1, base 2, and also on the emitter. That should, ooh, that should give us a good idea of what's going on here. So if we start the simulation again, first things first, this is not blinking quickly, which means we're going to want to slow this down. So we can actually see the ripples, which we can already see here. See? So let's set these to DC. We're not using the green. So let's go ahead and start with the emitter right here. And you can see it's kind of a sawtooth pattern. It's charging up, and then at this point, the trigger voltage is reached. And as that happens, the current flows across the unit ejection transistor and just drops just drops back down. If we do the same thing with the base and line this up, you'll notice that the base 2 spikes at the exact same time we reach the trigger voltage. You get a spike right here. And then it drops down and goes to zero again too. And right here, where it just cuts off, that's where the uni ejection transistor shuts off. If we take a look at base 1, if it'll cooperate, you'll notice that it has the exact opposite kind of profile as base 2. It drops down, which makes sense. It would have had a high potential, and then it drops when the current starts to flow across the unit ejection transistor a little bit faster. Okay, so there's a simulation. Uh, there's one more thing I want to do with you guys, and that is actually show you this on a breadboard. It's great to see it in a simulation, but there's nothing like the real thing. So, let's go take a look at that. Okay, our demo board is going to use the same components we used in the simulation. Now, when we plug this in, you're going to start to see the LED blink. And I want to mention something that I didn't mention in the simulation, and that is that when we turn the lights off here, you're going to see a dim glow on the LED. And that's from the small current that flows from base 1 to base 2 at all times. Um, there it is right there. And you can see it flashing when the potential above the capacitor reaches the trigger voltage. The 
the unit ejection transistor opens up, allows the capacitor to dump its current, and we get this nice oscillating action. Um, so that's what I want to show you, and this is the simplest circuit that I've found to date for making an LED blink. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. It'll help get the channel out to other viewers. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.